Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shine's Room. Uh, may I have a mic check, please? Webcam check. Good stuff. All right, everyone. I just wanted to talk a little. I know it's something that uh, a lot of you probably heard once or twice before in your career. It's just uh, basically um, risk reward and how so many people um, really tout it, but very few people just sit back and exercise. It. And what I've noticed is a pattern. Um, you know, of, of you know, traders come to me with you know things that are working for them, things that are not working for them. And surprisingly, in the last week. Um, uh, especially in the past three weeks, um, very, you know, serious losses from some of the people I spoke, some serious gains for some people I spoke, and a lot of, uh, you know, in between where people are just chopping around on this market action right now. So I just wanted to talk about risk reward, and I really feel a lot of people are overlooking it. So, um, it's really a stock secret when you think about it. I mean, just by a show of hands, how many people, when they open up a trade, have a very accurate idea of how much money they're going to lose? If they're incorrect, if their trade is incorrect, how many people even get there? How many people just see a stock and be like, oh, it's going to go up, and they just buy it, and that's really the last thing they think about? How many people here now... And uh, how many of you guys always know what you're going to lose? You know, how many people more or less can't say that's a firm? Yes, that's good. That's good. Maybe a little more. Know my loss prior. All right. You ready for this? All statistical data, people. You ready for this? Watch this. If you are a person who answered no, you answered no, you have no idea, not really no idea, but you don't know as soon as you hit the trade what you are risking. You maybe found it out after, maybe before, maybe, you know, you didn't find it out. If you answered that you actually um, didn't know how much money you were going to lose, you are probably not getting into the right trade. Stop immediately. You need to know, and you should write this down, put a little sticky note on your computer. It takes years to really um, evolve this form of strategy into just really trying to do it on an everyday basis. It tries to remove emotion, this strategy, and it tries to do uh, a couple things. So this is going to be a little bit of what I'm talking about here today. Um, let's talk about risk-reward ratio. And um, it's basically a very important stock market definition, obviously, for me. Every trader must have this value set in whatever type of trading strategy he or she uses. It's a simple formula. I consider it a stock trading secret because you would be shocked when, when you know, somebody's talking about a trade to me. And I say right away, how much money were you willing to lose on it? How much money were you willing to lose on it? How much money were you willing to lose on it? And some people say, uh, you know, that's approaching it from a pessimistic standpoint, Mr. Melnick, because you should only try to get in trades that you're going to make on and you should have the conviction and you should say, how much money am I going to make on it? doesn't work that way so it helps move these trading probabilities in your favor you want to know what's working against you the worst right now that you don't know how to invest this is one of the key stock trading terms that helps to do good stock market risk management and risk management is a key part of profitable stock market trading. You could be a great stock picker, but without good stock market risk management, you'll be losing money. I mention risk management tools quite often when it comes to, you know, trading and the markets in general and reasonings and channel breaks. For the key stock market definition is very simple. The profit value for every trade setup must be at least 3x, let's use 3x, three times bigger than the risk value. Simply put, and, and again, 
I am breaking it down and just think about what you're doing. You'll be surprised even if you know what I'm talking about when it's broken down like this. Simply put, if you expect to make a profit of $3 per share in a trade, you have to risk $1 per share as a maximum. You don't risk $1 to make 3 You're telling me you see a support level at 20 bucks and you're putting in a bid in at 21 hoping the stock goes to 24 Is that what you're doing? So you see a support level and you want to take that support level a dollar away. Is it an Apple a dollar away from a support level? Is it a $600 stock away from that support level where you're risking 1 to make 3 Or is it a... God forbid a $10 stock, which you're ris risking 10% of your value to make 30%. This trading secret looks easy, but you'd be surprised how many traders break this rule every day, and then all of a sudden their trading results are bad. When you trade only trades with the potential profit of $3 or more times bigger than the taken risk, your result will be stock trading with regular monthly income. Later, as you develop a longer history of your real trades, you'll be able to make small modification of this ratio to value that best fit for your trading strategy. Your trading journal or trading log or whatever you write down or trade accounting software will provide you enough reports and data and statistical evidence to do this for yourself. Don't be afraid. You ready for this one? Don't be afraid to reject a trade setup even if you like it very much. I repeat, don't be afraid to reject a trade setup even if you like it very much. There are plenty of other trade opportunities. You can find good stock picks on the stock market every single day for the rest of your life as long as this thing exists. Check, check this out. I've I've described basically how to use the risk reward ratio when you prepare um you know a stock trading setup for your own stock trading strategy. But it's not the last time you have to use these formula. These formula need to be used more than once. What are you talking about, Mark? You have to use this ratio also during the trade management you talk risk management during the trade management process as you have already traded you have to manage it accordingly it means that you have to have a trailing stop loss based on your rules and also you must take profits so what i'm saying to you is if you have a dollar risk on something and a stock goes up two dollars and you're still vehemently stubbornly holding on to these shares with your fingers you just don't want to let go you're making a mistake in the long run. Then the stock could go to $3 and you could get your full three. But if you're not punching it out when you're looking to make another dollar from the point where you're already up and in turn might get stopped out and lose $3 below if it comes down the two and then another dollar to stop you out, you are messing up. Risk reward ratio is used when you think about a new trailing stop level. It's always good to have this ratio better than one to one as your trade is developing and you want to set up a trailing stop. As your trade is closer and closer to your expected target, the trailing stop to have risk smaller than possible profit must be done. Always check this ratio when you do a regular trade analysis during any of your daily routines or your, through your daily trading process because that is what's going to turn you around. You have to realize that if you risk $3 on something or rather if you risk a dollar to make three dollars on something and your stock goes up a dollar you know what just happened you're dealing with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio you want better than that ratio after the stock goes up another dollar it has two more to go to the upside and if it stops you out it's going to come two down to the downside that's where constantly updating your stops 
helps you uh, trade this market. So also think of it as a percentage basis. I want you to think about it as this. People say bull and bear flags work so often with the best risk reward, and then you see somebody like me, um, you know, playing... Uh, uh, playing a, a myriad of stocks on a day like today, but you know, let me ask you something. Let me let me ask it like this. Let me ask it like this. If you approach a stock, like for example, you got your Qs right now trading 11 cents off of the day highs, hmm. 62.89. Does this surprise me? No. Why? Why doesn't this surprise me? Well. Very simply put, we were looking at the cues before. You saw we were breaking this major uh, support line here. We got through the 62.49 level beautifully, and we started free falling, right? Just as expected. However, remember, you have no confirmation up until when? You have no confirmation up until today closes. So if the cues were to close at 62.40 today, and then tomorrow I see the Qs trading right where they are now, that to me is a little more surprising than the Qs bouncing up through day highs right now. You have to know your technical analysis. If you're using a daily bar for today's bar, realize that your bar isn't done until the days close. When you're setting up a risk-reward uh, system based on these bars, you have to apply the two things if you want tight risk reward to work for you. When does tight risk reward work best? What sort of technical pattern does a tight risk reward work best on? Any thoughts? What kind of chart pattern does risk reward work best on? Is it um, Bollinger Bands, Fibonacci, channels, daily resistance levels, triggers, pivot points, falling bull wedge, ascending channel? You ready for this one? You ready for this answer? They're all the same. What? There are levels on every form of technical analysis that you can use to get in a phenomenal risk-reward opportunity. Throw it at me. Bull flag. I want to buy it at the digestive pattern of a support level. Uh, you mentioned ascending channel. Sure, ascending channel. I want to buy it near the support level, risk it by the low. I want to short it by the resistance level and take a hyperscalp to the short side if it hits resistance. That's what I want to do in an ascending channel. Oh, what did you say? Bear flag formation? What do you want to do right there? I want to short it against resistance, and um, I want to buy it only after the next potential bear flag pull continuation goes because that's when you might have a digestive move to the upside, and I could take a very tight risk there versus day low. I want to use Bollinger Band. I want to use it by the bottom of the band when I think uh, you might have some contraction within the band's uh, pivot points. I like to short things by uh, this uh, S4 levels or buy things, uh, you know, by R levels, whatever, by the support and resistance levels. Maybe you like certain levels to play. The bottom line is what I am telling you right now is it doesn't really matter what technical analysis you use to define these trades. Now, so many people love bull flag patterns. How many people only traded bull flag patterns today? I didn't. Most of you didn't. They have some of the best risk reward. And really, the risk side of a bull flag you could take very tight, and the risk side of any of these other technical patterns you want to take tight. But the beauty about flag formations is the reward part of the risk. Because the reward part could have a continuation pattern to the upper downside, producing, you know, 10x, 20x, 30x, 40x type profits. So I want you guys to do the following. If you are having trouble, here is your medicine. You're ready for this? Try this out. Doesn't work for you? Stop it. It's no skin off your back. You ready? When looking in a trade, Chart pattern recognition. What does the chart say right there? I don't care what kind of technical analysis you use. 
I like channels, I like resistance, I like support, I like wedges. Doesn't matter what you like, though. Identify the pattern. It's a bear flag. There's an ascending channel. The uh, stock trading right by R3 on the pivot point. It's on the outer ends of the Bollinger Bands. It's a, you know, 50% Fibonacci retrace, whatever, whatever the number. That's what you need to do. Identify your chart pattern. Now, without looking, choose a point on that pattern. This is number two. Choose a point on that pattern where you would like to make a trade. Write discrepancies for that pattern to happen. I want to buy it here, but if the market is break, if the spiders are breaking underneath one of those levels, one of these levels, the Q's under one of Mark's levels, the spies under one of Pepe's levels, then I'm not going to do it. Write a discrepancy. Write if, then only if, and if this and if that, then I'm long here with the risk reward here. Choose a point at the pattern with not looking at the level two, just look at the chart pattern and point where you want to buy. After you point of where you want to buy, there's probably some good reasoning there. Or point where you want to short, there's probably some good reasoning there. Because you're looking at a support level, now all of a sudden, all your trades are being approached technically, diligently. Now all of a sudden, you're curing a problem that most traders have and never do in the first place. So after you point out where you want to buy the stock, and where you want your stop to be, if you're trying to look for something on the daily to bounce $4, try not to risk a nickel. You run into perfect storm scenarios. You could start looking for projections, and this really defines your own risk reward on everyone's individual trading patterns. But look, when you do something like this and you're trying to determine where you need to place this order, just follow this step by step. Because what I did when I when I came up with these things, um, it was basically listening to you know traders and their talking and just questions that I just you know shooting the crap if you will with somebody and just literally trying to figure out what's going wrong so what i did was i just started breaking down the steps of what i do when i enter a trade and basically that is what i am revealing with you today so i chart pattern identification where you want to short it where you want to buy it and where your stop is on either end whatever it is you want to do step three Take the trade. Watch the trade. Don't put in a bid and an don't put in a buy order and a stop order and walk away from your screen. Feel the stock. Get as much information as you can. Watch the level two as you're trying to put in the bid. Remember, you're already approaching it with a sense of clarity. You have earned the right to track the level two and try to get a feel for the name because your homework was already done. Think, set up, execute. That is the sign of a profitable trader. That is exactly what we did. And again, congrats to you guys. I know a lot of you guys uh, caught some of these Apple. A lot of you guys just took a single put and uh, really had a nice payout this morning on these Apple puts. So, um, just want to get into that real quick. What we were doing yesterday. What did I do in the? What did I do yesterday at the yesterday's presentation? I said, hmm, okay. The orange line. If the Qs remain within here, this ascending channel, I'd say the market is bullish, right? And if it broke that rising wedge to the downside, I think that's bearish. Then what I did was I look on Apple. I took my technical thoughts on Apple, just like you see. I see a rising wedge. I see a bear flag pattern. I see a major ascending channel. If you zoomed out the chart a little, not shown on this picture, you get to that orange ascending channel right there. So what I said is this is a bearish setup. And I think it could potentially pull in. Excuse me. And then what do I do? I give my stance on it based on my own findings. 
Now, granted, I'm right. You don't have to set up a, a little presentation. You can just <laughs> write it down yourself. But now, all of a sudden, I start mapping out my conviction based on my technical analysis. So I identified a chart pattern. I identified what I think it's going to do. I identified levels of the stock where I was looking to attack. And then I execute. And that is just basically, um, you know, the simple way to approach a trade. Again, <laughs> you don't have to do, obviously, a slideshow or anything like that. But it really starts making you approach the trade. And it really starts forcing you to use that proper and that good technical analysis that you've learned. Keep in mind, you know, we do offer education here. There's a lot of educational programs out there. Um, Am I biased? Yeah, I'm biased. They suck. They're horrible. Some of the worst programs out there, and unfortunately, it's the majority of them. It's not the minority of them. And that is just from the majority of educational programs that I have personally seen. And I've been around the block. I know I look like a kid to some of you, but I have been around the block a few times. And I will tell you, a lot of the education there is just bad. It just doesn't work. So, again... If you approach this with my methodology right there, you're going to be approaching every single trade like I do before I approach it. And when you do that, you look, you have targets, you have good risk reward, and you have reasoning. And even more importantly than all those things I told you, you have conviction. Now all of a sudden you're the person saying, oh yeah, this is a bearish setup, this. If I'm wrong, I'm just going to lose this. But if I'm right, this can happen. Instead of that trader who always likes to beat himself up, come on, everybody has that trader. Ah, knowing me. Ah, everybody has that trader that they've known in this world. Come on, I don't believe that every person hasn't met this trader already. The trader is like, ah, I bought this damn thing. Watch. <laughs> Stock's going to plummet now like 20 points because I jumped into it. I'm like a walking jinx. You start thinking like that, you start preparing for failure, you're going to succeed. And you start preparing for success with the right technical analysis, strategies, risk reward behind your trades, and you're going to be setting up yourself up for success. And guess what? You're going to succeed. Remain strong, remain mentally tough, and attack your trades. It's just a different way that maybe some brains work when they approach a trade. I just gave a very simple breakdown analyze the technical analysis, find the risk reward execute if it falls within those parameters if something is making you feel uncomfortable about that trade do not forget what i talked about earlier and don't be afraid to just walk away from the trade because there's a million other fish in the sea hope you guys are having a wonderful day here uh congrats to all those who um uh like that apple breakdown from yesterday i know a few of you got some love letters here the last night after hours that's how i knew my apple work because i walked away from my computer and i was just outside and then all of a sudden like my phone is like and i look and i'm looking and i'm looking and i'm like okay and and, and as soon as i saw a ty for apple that's all of a sudden then i knew i killed it so um even if i didn't kill it or not it's still the proper way to approach something because it really gives you the conviction behind these things so i hope you guys are having a wonderful day more importantly learn something because you need to start setting yourself up on the proper regimen to get to the heavyweight bout of the market. You know the market's going to be a lot more volatile when we come into the winter. You guys know this already. So you know what? You know what Rocky is doing? Rocky is doing the push-ups, the running, the the jump roping why because he has a big bout to come up and you do too and as professional traders we deal with this every single year so clean up your risk reward clean up clean up the mentality behind your trades and you know i would like for for anybody who's going to try this this is what i ask for you in return i mean i mean how i did this for you right now i'm asking you for something I want to know how many trade setups you liked and how many of those that you rejected. How many trade setups that you liked technically, but you rejected because maybe the stock needed to be a little lower for your risk reward, whatever the reason. Because once you start doing that, 
Then all of a sudden you're like that. I, you know that beautiful girl who just knows she's so damn hot and it's horrible talking to you because she's like she's just like. Ah, smell the air up there. It's so nice and sweet up there. You know that girl who... Not, forget about a hot girl. A hot girl who knows she's hot. Then all of a sudden, you come that girl when it comes to... Like, she's trying to select a guy, which any one of the 200 guys there would... Uh, 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 over her. All of a sudden, you become that girl, analogically in the market, trying to look for the right stock. Mm, not him. Uh, not him, not him. Oh, you're cute. Let's see what this is looking like. Uh, not him. Reject certain trade ideas if the risk reward isn't there. You see something on a potential bull flag continuation pattern. All of a sudden, it's already 40 cents off support and you're buying it because it could jump up, uh, you know, 75 cents real quick. You're risking 40 cents. And even though you're taking a bullish pattern that often works, you're not buying it at the proper level. So keep that in mind when you approach the market. Happy trading, make money. And I hope you guys 